Okay, so it appears we are just waiting on Nate and the rest of the development team or whoever's going to join to get this started. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Scarecrow71. I am a KSP fanatic. Um, I am recording the AMA so that we have a recording out there somewhere. Um, everybody just sit patiently or fast forward to whenever the actual event starts when you start watching this. Um, until then, we're just going to sit in silence and wait for the devs to start speaking. Is there? Oh, you hear me now? Good morning, everyone. Sorry, we had a little bit of some technical difficulties, but we think we figured it all out. Uh, we're all very happy to be here today. Thanks for joining us. I am Michael Loreno. I'm your franchise social and community lead. And uh, we have our none other than Nate Simpson here next to me that will be answering all of your questions this morning. Well, most of them. We had a lot. And thank you all for submitting your questions. And we're all very excited to dive in here and ask some of these questions. Morning, everybody. This is Nate. Nice to see you all. Oh, I'm getting friend requests on Discord now. So I'm, I'm going to take a break while I answer these friend requests. Thank you, Cosmic Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to go ahead and start get started here. So I've got oh, okay. kind of well, <laughs> it's already falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what kind of a noob am I? <laughs> okay. Hey, Michael, what do you got for me? <laughs> I got to contain my laughter here. All right, let's jump right in here. So uh, first question we have from Hofflet from the Discord. Uh, what is the best uh, mission you saw an image of on KSP2 screenshots? Uh, we're starting with hard ones. Okay. Um... Well, personally, I really like all the land speed record attempts. Uh, they're getting pretty absurd. I don't know what the highest number I've seen so far yet, but it's a clearly non-physical, <laughs> very, very high number. Um, I like that people are making hay while we don't have re-entry heat because that's going to definitely be a constraint on those speeds. Uh, so that's fun to watch. Um, I, I also like uh, people landing in weird spots. I've seen good landings in the tracking station dish. Uh, I've seen people parking jet fighters on the parking garage. Um, we are going to be improving collision on the garage in uh, an upcoming update. And so now I assume people will start filling up the garages with stuff. So, yeah, looking forward to all that. Awesome. Uh, next question we have from is from Inwin on the Discord. Uh, how has the rough launch of early access affected the overall mood and productivity of team members and developers? How does your team stay motivated through all of the hateful comments that get thrown towards the development and marketing teams? 
Uh, it's pretty hard to answer these kinds of questions for everybody on the team. So I'll, I can give you a personal perspective. Um, I mean, the mood's good, right? We're, we're having fun playing the game right now. Um, it hasn't always been fun. Uh, you know, like as, as these bugs get squashed, we have more fun playing the game as well. Um, and it's, of course, really nice to see people in the community having more fun uh, as the game improves. Um, yeah, I, staying motivated. I mean, it also feels really good to fix a bug. You know, it's kind of like scratching an itch that you haven't been able to scratch for a really long time. Uh, so, so really, the work itself is a pretty good motivation. Um, I mean, most of us on the team have been working in games for years. Uh, and so, you know, mean comments are something that kind of comes with the territory. But um, I've noticed with this community, it's rarely coming from a place of hate. Um, it's usually somebody who's frustrated because they want to do something that they can't do. Um, so, you know, even when they're unhappy, people are recognizing that the experience is going to keep improving. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'd say overall, mood's pretty good. I'd agree. I'm having a good time, too. Uh, our next question is from uh, Hattrick, also on the Discord. We have, uh, as a longtime KSP1 player, I was worried about the future of KSP2 after the rough release. However, I must say, uh, I and many others have renewed faith in you and your team at after the success of this first patch. Awesome job, guys. Thank you. Uh, that being said, what can you say to calm the concerns of the diehard fans that are still worried that we may never see certain roadmap goals fulfilled due to funding? Um, well, first of all, we didn't put things on the roadmap that we didn't feel confident we'd get to. Um, I mean, everybody here, really from the bottom to the top, Intercept, Private Division, Take Two, um, is in this for the long haul. You know, I mean, we, we all saw KSP1 evolve over a decade. It's basically an institution at this point. Um, and uh, I, I think basically the encouragement we're getting from all directions, whether it's the publisher or the fans or, you know, other people on our own team, um, build a stable foundation. Uh, you know, one of the, actually one of the nice things about being first party at Take Two is we don't have to be worried about, you know, making rent making rent next month. Like if, if you've ever worked at an indie game studio, uh, you know, you really are in, in many ways controlled by the need to keep the lights on. Um, and, and honestly, take two can afford to take the long view, which is, which is nice. It really helps us be able to make good balanced decisions with the, with the long term in mind. Cool. Uh, our next question here is from K create also on the discord. Uh, can you give uh, any more detail about how the automated trade routes are going to work? We, we see ships automatically landing on or taking off from the launch pad, or would be more of an in-the-background kind of thing. How will the game handle changing Delta V requirements due to different planetary alignments? Uh, big question. Um, you know, maybe it's helpful to give a little context about iterative development. Um, when we create a spec, um, it usually kind of... Uh, talks about a series of steps that the feature will go through. Um, and so, you know, we start with basic functionality and then additional improvements are kind of layered in. And each of those phases uh, is balanced against other production priorities, right? So if, if we attempt to make the perfect platonic version of a feature, you know, or like it's got all the bells and whistles, that, and, and, and we work on that to the expense of a bunch of other features that also need to exist, we end up with a very unbalanced game. So the idea is to move everything forward stepwise in parallel so that you have an overall good experience and that we also are able to improve things over time. Um, so as I talk about anything over the course of this AMA, um, I can talk about things that I want. Um, they may be described in the specs as a long-term or aspirational goal. This is sort of most perfect version of the feature. Um, but it, this is a good example of something where if we're talking about delivery routes, we have clear steps that that feature is going to go through. Um, so in its first implementation, uh, it'll be a simple timer. It's just crediting and debiting resources to vehicles and colonies um, based on the duration of the original delivery mission. So you run it one time and then it'll repeat at the periodicity that's sort of established by that first mission. And then the next version of that timer um, it may take launch windows and phase angles into account so that the periodicity of those timers is affected by the alignment of the planets with which they're associated. Um, and then, obviously, someday we would love to see vehicles coming and going. Um, I cannot promise that, uh, but that is a thing that I want. It is a long-term aspiration. It is described in the spec. Um, but, you know, again, we're looking at this as something that hopefully we've got 
a 10-year runway, just like KSP-1 had. So uh, we want to shoot for the stars if we can. Awesome. The next question here we have is from Silo uh, on the Discord. Can we get anything in writing to the plan structure function of multiplayer within the game? How do you plan to work or work around certain speed bumps like time warp or two-player craft docking, i.e., where is the processing for this done? So uh, generally, we're trying to save the details around multiplayer for a future communication. I mean, especially given that it's the sort of last tent pole feature as part of the core development. Um, we, we try not to go into too much detail, but, but let me try to give you something. Um, so uh, we do expect there to be separate timelines. Um, and you will not be able to physically interact with other players unless you're on the same timeline as another player. So there would be a reconciliation of time warp before you're interacting physically, which means docking or landing on somebody's colony or something like that. Um, I probably uh, am not equipped to get into the details of how we're um, simulating which client has physics authority when you're within the physics bubble. Um, uh, there's probably some iteration still going on around how best to, uh, how most efficiently to do that. Um, so yeah, I will, I will leave that for a future communication. Awesome. Uh, next question is from Paradox507, also from the Discord. How much time and research goes into deciding what kind of rocket slash space plane parts get into KSP2 slash KSP? Um, a lot, uh, especially in the early days before we had, uh, Chris Adderley, a.k.a. Nartea, um, who is a, you know, celebrated part modder uh, for KSP-1, who is now uh, our, part, our lead part designer. Um, you know, I, I worked with subject matter experts. Uh, Dr. Yuri Shimlock at the University of Washington helped us with the designs for a lot of the interstellar uh, engines, inertial confinement fusion, uh, Z-pinch fusion, that kind of thing. Um, you know, we hold ourselves to this standard of uh, rooting everything in the game in real science and engineering. You know, we, even if it is not a uh, perfectly realistic representation, it is meant to be a thing that if you look it up on Wikipedia, um, you discover that it is a thing. That uh, if you hear, if you see that there's a Z-pinch fusion engine uh, and you think, well, that sounds silly, that can't be real, then you can go on a Wikipedia odyssey and discover that it is real. Um, we also spend a lot of time on the Atomic Rockets website. Uh, it's run by a guy named uh, Winchell Chung. It is the coolest website on the internet. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you are a rocket nerd and ex and you want to know every engine that's ever been proposed, <laughs> they're all there. Uh, and sometimes we take uh, inspiration from that. Awesome. Our next one here is, in the, uh, is user Nitro, also from the Discord. In regards to the decision to leave wobbly rockets within the game, are there plans to make this feature more detrimental to rocket design, to rocket design and progression, or is this simply an early implementation of something that will become more elaborate and significant? This is a really good example of how uh, having something in early access helps us uh, prioritize and focus on the right things. Um, this is obviously a very hot topic within the community, and it's also something that is frequently discussed within the team. Um, I will describe my general goal for this. Um, when something is very skinny and made of many stacked parts, it should wobble. Um, I think that if we were to move completely beyond rigid body physics, that we will ha we would have, um, you know, kind of subverted one of the things that's very fun and funny about this game. Um, do we want larger vehicles? Do we want our interstellar vehicles to be wobbling around? Do we want stuff that's larger than, a, than let's say, the 3.75 meter core size to be wobbling all over the place? We do not. We are not happy with the current wobbliness of the vehicles. Um, so uh, this is an area of current focus and, and heavy iteration and testing, um, and it will get better. Awesome. Our next question is from Almon, also from the Discord. What was your favorite thing to work on in KSP2? Also, what was your least favorite thing to work on? Uh, favorite thing uh, would be probably tutorials. Um, it kind of tapped into m my own uh, passions as a storyteller and, um, you know, especially a visual storyteller. Uh, 
learning how much more efficiently we could convey core concepts via animations was a joyous process. Um, and we're obviously very excited to see that they work. Um, my least favorite, uh, probably tutorials, um, <laughs> in that we had to iterate like crazy. Uh, we had to um, redo them, reanimate them multiple times, uh, multiple uh, animatics, multiple comics that we built. Um, it's gone through many text iterations. Uh, it's just a thing that if it's not communicating effectively, you have to tear it down and start over. And, uh, you know, we eventually had breakthroughs on every single one of them, but it was, uh, it was a process. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, our next one is from Deb Deb, uh, also from Discord. What has been the most challenging feature to work on? So sort of the, the same question. Yeah, I mean, for me, obviously, tutorials. Uh, for the team, um, I mean, I think probably the primary technical challenge was adapting the architecture for interstellar scale, uh, accelerating trajectories, uh, you know, time warp under acceleration, uh, and then, of course, multiplayer. Um, that is a gigantic uh, engineering ask and touches every part of the game and makes it so that there's no such thing as a simple or easy change. Um, there's just a lot of complexity under the hood. Um, so that's made all of the features challenging to work on. Uh, but uh, I, again, we're, we're making huge progress. Awesome. Uh, our next one here is from, uh, also from the Discord, Minotaur1501. Uh, what was your initial introduction to KSP? Uh, I started I started playing in 2012. Um, I think it's probably like around version 0.16. I, I do remember when EVA arrived uh, because prior to that, I, my my MUN rescue missions involved like uh, contraptions that used landing legs to scoop up uh, landed capsules. <laughs> and in fact, that's how I learned about uh, the difference between the sort of rigid body physics and the on rails physics. Like I, I painstakingly scooped up a rescued capsule to bring back from the MUN and, uh, and then time warped and, and, and lost everything. It was very sad. It's my first true sadness in the game. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've, I've been playing it for quite a while. I got a couple thousand hours in KSP one. I have no idea. I've actually never tracked what I have in KSP two. I wonder if I've, I probably have bigger numbers in KSP two now. Hmm, that's interesting. Cool. Our uh, our next one is from also from the Discord, Master Chef One One Seven. How has community feedback shaped your vision and priorities for the game? Uh, I mean, I think it depends how far back we're we're going with community feedback. Like, I've been a, mem a member of the community for so long, so the whole wish list of features that I brought to the beginning of the project was probably heavily influenced by conversations that I took part in in the community. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we're in pretty good alignment on a lot of those things. Um, more recently, uh, you know, obviously this feedback helps us to prioritize. Um, the Wobbly Rockets thing is a really good example. Um, you know, one, one weirdly and unexpectedly cool thing about uh, having the community giving us their feedback is that it keeps us from over-focusing on things that turn out not to actually be a major issue for the community. Like, you, you never really know, you know, what is palatable or what's going to bug someone. Or, and sometimes someone internally, and I, I'm probably chief among, among them, you know, I'll over-index on something that's just irritating to me. And, it, it, and it's good to have context that, oh, you know what, this is just you, Nate. Like, most people are fine with this thing, so why don't you focus on the things that people would like to see improve in the short term? So. It's been very helpful in that way. Awesome. Our next one is from uh, Ball HJ on the Discord. Uh, what has been your favorite part or experience in developing KSP two? Um. Well, gosh, I mean, one of the reasons I wanted to work on this is that I had the experience of recommending KSP one to people, and you know, feeling in my heart that it's the best game that's ever been made. Um, and then they try it and they bounce off of it. Um, and so much of that was about that first time user experience just being very challenging. Um, you know, all the things that, that make it a, a perceived to be a hardcore game. Um, 
and uh, being able to uh, improve that onboarding, that first time user experience so that um, people no longer bounce off of it and that I can now invite those same people to play Kerbal with the understanding that the core of the gameplay is unchanged um, and, and have them have a good experience and get excited about it in the same way that I feel excited about it is uh, maybe one of the greatest things I've ever felt in my life. Like, it's really cool to finally be able to share this with people who are, you know, important to me in my life, my family and friends. Awesome. Uh, our next one here is from S Ball uh, from the Discord. Uh, will certain resources needed? Will certain resources needed for colony construction to be planet biome specific? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's that diversity of resources that's going to make exploration mode um, so fun. Uh, you know, instead of the goals being um, you know, ASP1, for the most part, with the exception of contracts and career mode, for the most part, the things that you set as your own goals are, are self-directed. Um, and, and when they're not self-directed, they're kind of dry, right? Like take the temperature at 20,000 meters at such and such latitude and longitude. Um, when there is a unique resource somewhere uh, that... Um, that gates your access to a category of parts and exists in only one location that is very hard to get to, especially if that location represents a unique physics challenge against which you're going to have to design a new vehicle architecture. Um, wow, it just totally changes the game. At that point, uh, you're getting something material, a literal material, uh, by going to that location. So, um, yeah, the, the interplanetary and then the interstellar progression is really, I think, in a pop um, when, when, yeah, when you're able to dig up a specific thing that gives you a specific ability. Awesome. Uh, and then we have from another uh, user from Discord, uh, Master Chef One One Seven again. Uh, has there been any piece of community feedback slash content that you and the team find especially motivating? Oh yeah, I mean, some of the stuff I, I already talked about, like people, anytime I hear a testimonial about somebody who wasn't able to get into the original game, who is able to get into KSP2, that's extremely motivating. Um, uh, especially when it's kids, like I love hearing that, that a kid has gotten excited about space because they, they've played our game. We're already hearing that, and we're only a few weeks in. Um, uh, and it's great to hear kudos about... Uh, the things we're doing well, right? I mean, when we hear that some somebody thinks we're on the right track, that feels good. Um, you know, whether it's visual quality stuff or the soundtrack, or I know Howard, uh, Howard Mostrom, our sound guy, and also the composer of our soundtrack, um, has just been sort of <laughs> showered with praise, and it is absolutely deserved. We anytime any of us sees anything online, we forward it to him. Um, and I'm so happy to see him, you know, front and center in the limelight and being appreciated for what he's bringing to the game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, when we hear when we hear uh, nice things said about us, it, it, it energizes us for sure. Agreed. Uh, our next one is from Birch, Birch Mallard Man, also used on the Discord. How often does the dev team play the game? Uh, we have team wide play tests twice a week. Um, I think most of us play every day. I, I definitely play every day. Uh, and then the QA team probably plays <laughs> every hour, <laughs> every minute. <laughs> um, so, uh, given that they're a significant portion of our team, uh, the, the short answer is we're all playing the game all the time, basically. Yeah, <laughs> we uh, we have another question from Master Chef One One Seven, also from the Discord. What non KSP game slash piece of media has inspired you and the team the most? So it's not like what is our favorite; it's what has inspired us. Um, well, there's a video that we show people when they join the team. Um, it's called The Wanderers. It's by a guy named Eric Vernquist. Um, I highly recommend look it up on YouTube. It is a beautiful, very short video that uh, in many ways we kind of think of as our North Star in terms of the feeling that we want KSP2 to generate. Um, it's got a Carl Sagan voiceover, uh, and it's just these sort of beautiful uh, rendered scenes of, you know, uh, humankind exploring the solar system and the kind of near future. 
uh, really love that one. It's it it is uh, something that I myself watch fairly frequently, and I know everyone else on the team likes it a lot too. Awesome. And then we have one another one from Discord, uh, username Kev. Will there be more tutorials in game, such as the ones being uploaded to TikTok, etc.? So uh, that refers to two different things. We have these kind of TikTok tips and tricks. Boy, that's a hard thing to say. Um, that we are continuing to make like an, on nearly a weekly or a bi-weekly basis. I mean, Michael, you could probably speak to that more than I can. But M M Matthew Pope, one of the members of our community team, has been doing this amazing job of, uh, of putting together these assets. And they're really fun and funny and informative. Um, if we're talking about the in-game tutorials, um, we've got uh, quite a few uh, already made. Um, I think like the animations, I think, are completed for like nine or ten of them. So, you know, as new features are being brought into the game, their associated tutorials will come in alongside them. So, yeah, there's a there's a lot to come in that area. Awesome. Uh, our next one is from, also from the Discord, username unknown dude. When Interstellar is implemented, are the different solar systems going to be stationary or are they going to orbit something similar to, to sorry, going to orbit something to simulate a galaxy? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that, that uh, I learned very early in the project when we were talking about Interstellar is that the movement of stars around Galactic Center is uh, extremely counterintuitive and doesn't follow the same rules um, that, you know, your normal, like, sort of Keplerian elliptical orbits uh, work in, an, in a planetary environment. Um, and, you know, you're dealing with things like dark matter and, in, and really, like, especially within a local frame of reference, the movement of stars can seem to be erratic, uh, chaotic, uh, unpredictable. Um, so uh, our, our current implementation is that they do move uh, relative to the galactic plane, kind of like horses on a merry-go-round. Um, we want other stars to be uh, moving targets. So, you know, that, that, that you have to do um, planning just like you have to do with uh, an interplanetary uh, maneuver. Um, and, you know, you'll, you'll need to try to get an intercept uh, in the same way, but obviously across a much la larger distance. Um, so, yeah, short answer, yes, they move. Awesome. Uh, our next one's also from the Discord, uh, username Croco. Procedural wings are great, but are there plans for procedural parts, maybe for fuel tanks? Yeah, this is, this is always uh, a question we're asking ourselves, right? Like, when what is the threshold beyond which we have over proceduralized the game and it's not Kerbal Space Program anymore? Because a big part of it is still, you know, working with what you've got, working with those modular parts. Um, but we know that certain kinds of players really want to optimize things. Um, and something like procedural tanks would certainly open up uh, a lot more options for those kinds of people. Um, Right now, the next planned procedural part is procedural radiators. I think we've already even uh, released images of those in action. Um, those are needed for interstellar. Uh, in fact, probably the when you're talking about the silhouette of an interstellar craft, the radiators is um, probably the 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 key feature. <laughs> um, after that's in, I think we'll take a look at what the what our priorities are, what the community's priorities are. Um, personally, uh, I. I'm not sure that fuel tanks is is the next thing that I would proceduralize. I think there's probably a decent case to make for solar panels. Um, but yeah, that'll that'll be a conversation that that we'll be uh, following along with. Awesome. We have another one from the Discord here, uh, user Ray Sparks. Are there going to be significant changes to the science system in KSP2 or any changes that you feel are worth talking about? Uh, sorry. Yeah. So, so just for context, um, the first of the progression modes, uh, that we'll be releasing in an upcoming roadmap, roadmap update, um, is science mode. Um, and, uh, similar to KSP one's science mode in the broad strokes, um, you know, you gather science by exploring new locations, uh, and then you redeem that science at an R and D center, which unlocks nodes on a tech tree, which gives you access to new kinds of parts. Um, Differences would include, uh, we don't want people to be able to just uh, gather huge amounts of science around KSC. <laughs> we want 
to encourage people to go out into the universe to gather that science. So that that is a, a change. Um, I think we're also looking at uh, diversifying science biomes a little bit so that in some cases it may be similar to KSP in terms of you just land in a region of a certain celestial body and get science. Um, but there may also be some more localized uh, discoveries that uh, require a little bit more searching. Uh, and those will also yield science. Um, and then I think one thing we haven't talked too much about is that there w there is a mission system that supplements uh, both the science and exploration modes. Um, they're not contracts, um, but they are a sort of uh, opt-in mission system that gives you um, a reward for for doing a particular thing. So that will sort of exist in lockstep with the science. Awesome. Our next one also comes from Discord, a username Tech. What is your favorite KSP2 mod so far? Uh, we're, we're, we are uh, impressed by how many, <laughs> many exist already. Um, I should have predicted that, but still, still awesome and surprising. Uh, selfishly, probably the one I love the most right now is uh, one from Linux Guru Gamer. Um, who I think a lot of people in the modding community already are uh, well acquainted with. Um, it's a bug reporting script that collects all the relevant logs and files uh, and, and packs them up for a bug report. Um, it makes our jobs so much easier to have actual files to look at um, when we're trying to diagnose a problem. So if you haven't gotten that one yet, uh, check it out. I forget what it's actually called, but Linux Guru Gamer is the guy who made it. Um, yeah, definitely awesome. Cool. Our next one is... Sorry, my finger slipped. Uh, also from the Discord, our username Motorbike List. Uh, what has the morale been like throughout development? Ooh, throughout development, over the entire development of the game. Uh, Again, I'm speaking for a bunch of people who aren't here to speak, speak for themselves. My impression, overall, good. Um, I think it's at a high point right now uh, because, you know, we, we now have a trajectory line and it's pointed in the right direction. Um, and uh, I think it's been great for morale to no longer be working in a vacuum. Um, you know, I, I think it's, it's possible to kind of feel like we're toiling away at the bottom of a dark hole. Uh, but now that we've released, uh, you know, you see the effects of the improvements that you make to the game very rapidly. Uh, I, uh, yesterday I was looking through the KSP2 screenshots discord and, um, just marveling at how much more ambition has been unlocked just by the first patch. And I, I know the game still has bugs. We're still, uh, you know, heading into patch two, there's going to be a lot of, uh, additional fixes going in, but even with the things that were corrected in patch one, people are having more fun. And to see that kind of direct consequence of the work that you're putting into the game is, uh, boy, it feels great. Cool. Our next one is also from the Discord, username Diver. For the far off coloni colonization update, how will buildings work? Will we assemble them ourselves by landing modules or making them on site? and moving them into position, or will it be more of a prefabricated type of building system? Uh, yeah. Um, so we have a, uh, an inflatable founder module. I think it's actually been seen already in, in some asset or other um, that you, you put on a vehicle uh, and you bring it to a location. And once you deploy it, um, it, you basically pick a spot. It's where it's basically like you're setting up a space camping site. <laughs> Uh, and you uh, you set it up, and it basically deploys its own VAB style interface. Uh, it's called a BAE, a I think it's a base assembly editor. Um, and uh, within that interface, you can use local materials. Uh, and once you have an in situ resource uh, utilization module, um, use even locally extracted raw resources to um, to add new modules onto the colony. So it's a very VAB style interface where you're clicking things together. Um, it, there, there are uh, attached nodes similarly to putting together a vehicle. Um, and yeah, that's how you, that's how you build a colony. Um, and the same rules apply to an orbital colony. You just, you set up your camping site uh, at an orbit that you want it to be. Cool. 
cool. Our next one also is from Discord, a username Bill C zero five zero seven. When will water physics be fixed and properly added? Yeah, I mean, especially because we have um, a boat launch now where you can send vehicles to immediately sink. <laughs> uh, we we <laughs> we're, we're definitely working on that area. Um, yeah, I mean, buoyancy uh, and associated systems, including like hydrodynamic drag, the behavior of vehicles when they collide with a fluid surface, um, they're they're all being worked on right now. Um, so. Uh, yeah, it's a it's an area of parallel development that's going on alongside all of the um, uh, performance improvements and stability improvements. Cool. Our next one also comes from the Discord username Ollie Gaming. Now that the first patch is out, what are you mainly focusing on? Yeah, kind of what I just said: um, stability, performance, and then new features in that order. Um, Obviously, uh, I, I am eager to see uh, heat represented. Um, we have released some images of uh, the reentry heating effect, but there's also, of course, the uh, the actual uh, thermal systems associated with that heating. Um, I my personal feeling is that uh, once we have that in place, we have. Uh, what is the metaphor I've been using? It, it felt a little bit to me like until we had those, we kind of had a dog with three legs and, and thermal being the fourth leg. So once we have that, um, I feel like the, the structural outlines of the core experience are in place. Uh, I'm eager to see that happen. We have another one here from the Discord, username SNJAR. Uh, any plans to have a solid planet that is about the size of Joule or perhaps larger? Um. I'm curious about the physics of a solid planet that's the size of a gas giant. Um, so we do have a, a super Earth uh, in the game. Um, it's called Oven. Uh, I think it's in the Deb Deb system. Um, obviously, that's all uh, c coming with the interstellar update. I, I, sorry, I, I shouldn't say we have. We will have. Uh, the asset exists internally. Um, it's not as big as Joule. Uh, I think it's like 0.6. Uh, larger, 60% uh, larger than uh, Kerbin, um, and it's got its own rings. Um, it's definitely big enough to make landing hard. It doesn't take <laughs> very much more gravity for things to get real dicey uh, when you're trying to land on a, on a hard surface. Um, but yeah, I, not currently any uh, plans for a jewel-sized terrestrial planet. Um, yeah, I would be curious to hear from the community whether that's a thing they want, and then maybe we could talk about it. Our next one here is from Boylonian, also from the Discord. Uh, will there be XL-sized launch engines? And if so, are there any estimates on when they would be added? Yeah. Um, so I don't know specifically what they have in mind. Um, but uh, yeah, there's some really big engines um, that will arrive with the Interstellar update. I mean, people have seen uh, images with the uh, inertial confinement fusion engine, what's called the Crucible. Um, that thing is gigantic. Uh, it's very, very large. Um, so yeah, um, there are some big engines coming for sure. Cool. Our next one here is also from the Discord, username Vortigaunt. Will we, will we have and when realist, realistic plasma smoke tail after re-entering spacecraft and different colors of heated plasma because of different speeds of re-entry. I mean, let me one up you, uh, you know, different atmospheres probably have different, um, uh, colors of, of plasma, right. Different ionization attributes. Um, so, you know, going back to that iterative development point, um, the first version of re-entry heating, um, uh, will, will, it may just be uniform uh, for, for all atmospheres. Um, the spec aspirationally calls for um, different colors depending on velocity uh, and local conditions. Um, so, yeah, um, hopefully uh, we just continue to watch it grow over time. Cool. Another one here from the Discord, username Soul666. Was there ever a bug in early development that was so hilarious that the team still references it today? 
Yeah, there's an infamous one. So, um, the RCS puffs uh, involve a cone-shaped mesh, or at least they did. Um, and it's basically an invisible mesh uh, to which um, a, an effect, a visual effect, is applied when the RCS block uh, fires. Um, and we had a very frustrating bug where every vehicle launching off the pad would make it to a certain velocity and then just rip itself apart immediately, violently. And we were trying to figure out, like, is this happening when we're crossing uh, a frame of reference threshold? Or, like, is there, is there a collider somewhere? Like, we really could not figure it out. And it turned out that um, <laughs> the, those meshes for those RCS puffs were generating drag. They had, they had not... <laughs> um, they had not been excised from the drag system, and and they were basically each generating more drag than a fully deployed parachute. So anything that they were attached to would just immediately get ripped off. Um, so, yeah, that one was. I think we all had a huge laugh when we realized how silly and stupid the actual <laughs> bug was. Uh, and it's always nice when it turns out not to be like a f fundamental flaw with the architecture. Um, so yeah, that was that one was fun. Cool. Our next one here is also from the Discord. Username BJQP. Will atmosphere-rich celestial bodies have weather patterns sometime in the future? And they have a follow-up to that, asking, if so, would the weather have any physical effect on your vessel? I mean, you know, now we're... there. Okay, so I'll give you the short answer, which is we do not have short-term plans for that. Um, we have planets that have... Um, uh, an axial tilt, which means, you know, we, if, we were tantalizingly close to having a justification for not only weather, but seasons. Um, and, uh, I mean, obviously there's a lot of bigger stuff we need to focus on in the short term. Uh, again, very long runway for KSP2. So, um, I never say never for anything. And personally, as a player, if we were to do something like weather, of course you'd want it to affect gameplay, right? Like you wouldn't want it to just be purely visual um because then why do it uh but yeah that's uh that's definitely aspirational um but i would love to see it so you know I, there's also always this sort of in the back of your head you're thinking um as as we begin to unleash the power of the modders as we make the game increasingly moddable um what might they achieve you know i mean we've seen the amazing things they do in ksp1 so Sometimes uh, there's something in the back of my head that's, you know, like, well, I'm curious what, what they will achieve as well. Awesome. We also, and then uh, also from the Discord, username Veggie, what is one feature slash part slash idea you really wanted to implement but would not slash could not for whatever reason? This game is unique among the games that I've worked on in that it's pretty rare to say no. To things it, it, it's more that everything lives on a spectrum of priority um so I, I think that you'll frequently see things being deferred because there are other things that are more important to work on um like chris and i uh we really want a proper airliner cockpit you know like uh but uh as we build these cockpits and then as we implement iva cockpits there's a non-zero resource cost to to um you know building these out at a high level of quality um but i want it uh and i think we'll get to it someday um so that's that's maybe an example same user uh once the game is complete with everything on the roadmap implemented and debugged is it possible development will continue with new features oh yeah i mean that that's a plan like ksp got updates over a decade so yeah we'd like to do the same thing cool next one here is also from the discord username strata Will interactable IVAs be a thing? Yep, that's part of the plan. Um, can't speak to timing, uh, but the cockpits were made with IVA in mind. I mean, if you've ever moved the camera inside one of those cockpits, you can see empty sockets where uh, um, artificial horizons will live and that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, um, yep, definitely part of the plan. Next one, also from the Discord, username MaxV. What's your favorite KSP2 creation thus far by you or anyone else? Um, 
that depends largely on the day that you're asking me. And also, I should really highlight that a lot of different people on the team uh, are following what people create, and everyone has a favorite category of thing. Uh, I know that uh, Ness, our art director, just loves it when people make things they're not supposed to make, whether it's flying lawnmowers or giant shopping carts or, I don't know, dragons, um, because she's an artist and she loves to see people using it as an artistic media. Um, I think the, the one that I, that I actually started up an internal Slack channel to track, there, a lot of people have been making F4 Phantom aircraft. <laughs> uh, and s some of them, I don't know what it, I mean, I don't have any special affection for F4 Phantoms. They're cool. But um, there are just there have just been so many attempts at that plane, and they're all so like so impressive. Um, um, that, yeah, I, I I started collecting in a, in a Slack channel just to kind of share the people on the team. Cool. And then our next question here is from Sim One, also in the Discord. Do you plan to add life support to the game, like the USI life support mod for KSP One? Yeah, we've made a determination that, at least in the short term, the addition of life support um, won't enhance gameplay all that much um, for most players. Um, obviously, a lot of people have a lot of fun with life support mods in KSP1. Uh, once again, we're hoping that once modability is easier, that, you know, that segment of the player base can be served in that way. Um, so, yeah, that's my position on that right now. Well, cool. same user. Do you plan to add telescopes and asteroids early in the game already? Um, we have already made assets for both. Um, but uh, obviously implementation is a different matter. Um, and we'll, we'll implement them when priority and when the schedule allows. Yeah. Cool. Username Lihazos. Sorry if I butchered that one. Many community members across the modding scene have noticed certain models often contain insane polygon accounts. Will those be, be re reviewed for optimization passes too? Yeah, I mean, provided it's not an insane uh, polygon count that is insane for a reason, like those IVA cockpits. I, I've, I've definitely heard people say, why are you spending all these polygons on these cockpits? And the simple answer to that one is, well, eventually the camera's gonna, there will be a camera living in there and it'll be needed. Um, but uh, occasionally, yeah, occasionally uh, a, a, an unusually high poly count will sneak through on an asset that doesn't need it. Um, when we find those, we revise them as the schedule allows. Uh, if you keep close eye on um, our patch notes, you will frequently see a, uh, a very generally worded item that just says something like uh, mesh optimization uh, or something like that. And that often can encompass the overhaul of um, many parts. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's an ongoing project for sure. Cool. Uh, next one is from user program. Will we see many more star systems or interstellar objects added throughout the game's map as the years go on? Uh, so, right, we've, we've committed to three star systems uh, during early access in the lead up to 1.0. Um, I would love to add more uh, after 1.0. Um, circumstances permitting. So yeah, I uh, that's not an uh, an official plan. Uh, I have not vetted this with uh, uh, anyone else on the team. Um, but uh, certainly, you know, when we talk about these things, we're constantly having new ideas for interesting celestial bodies that would. I mean, obviously, the the key justification for the invention of a new celestial body is: does it create a new kind of gameplay? Does it require you to? Uh, think of a new kind of vehicle to conquer it. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, occasionally we have new ideas. And when we have those ideas, we have a desire to bring them into being at some point. Cool. Next one here is from username Butterlord. Will asteroids make a return or foreign bodies in general? Yep. Uh, artists have already made them. Um, just, again, a matter of uh, when they make sense in the schedule. We have uh, one here from uh, user per two. Two, three, three. Will there be something similar to career mode where you will you add planes, challenges, contracts? Yeah, I, I mentioned earlier about missions. Um, they're going to be issued in both science and exploration mode. Um, 
obviously we replaced money as the critical constraint uh, with resources, right? Especially as you move into the interstellar progression, the thing that um, is the limiting factor to what you're able to build at any given colony uh, is is what the local resource availability is, and that's constrained by whatever delivery routes you've set up and how much uh, local resource collection you're doing to and from uh, the colony itself. Um, so uh, it's it's a much more materials based uh, gating. Um, so that's about as close as we get to career mode. Um, they they live in a post. I guess it's not post scarcity because they still have to dig stuff up, but they're a post monetary society. Can we get a uh, next user here? Is phase? Can we get a wind tunnel at the KSE for testing aerodynamics? Um. So there is a spec. Um. Not for a wind tunnel, uh, although that would be rad. Um. But there is a spec for an ex an expansion of the center of uh, functionality in um, in the VAB to give you more detailed information about the the lift, uh, drag, thrust, and weight um, attributes of your vehicle uh, in a way that's sort of visual and intuitive uh, and that responds dynamically to, um, you know, the removal of or addition of parts to the vehicle. Um, it's not a wind tunnel, but I think it will uh, be diagnostic in a way that a wind tunnel might be. Um, a wind tunnel would be cool uh, if, uh, hmm, yeah, I'd like to think more about what that would look like and how uh, how we might visualize the results. Next one here is from Nova Raptor. Will robotics be implemented in a future update? Um, probably not before 1.0. Um, just given how much work there is in the run up to 1.0. Um, and also we would, when we get to something like that, we're going to want it to be, uh, really well implemented. I don't want it to be an afterthought. Um, I want it to sort of build off of lessons we learned from robotics in KSP one. Um, definitely a thing we want, um, someday. Next one here is from Physicist. Are there plans to have collaborations for missions and, or other scenarios and game with IRL space agencies such as NASA, ESA, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, KSB-1 has done it uh, in the past, um, and we're ab absolutely still open to it. Um, a lot of that stuff is contingent on what NASA and ESA are doing at any given moment. Um, we're obviously pretty excited about all the Lunar Gateway stuff. We're obviously excited about Starship. You know, if, if any uh, potential uh, institutional or, uh, you know, let's say collaborator is out there and wanting to reach out to us to talk, uh, we're absolutely waiting by the phones. User name, uh, next question is from user Sing Pizza. Who is your favorite Kerbal? Uh, for completely personal reasons, uh, Tim C. Kerman. Uh, is my favorite. Uh, he's based on a friend of mine who also was an artist on the game during its early development, uh, who has passed away, uh, who many of us on the team have worked with for many, many years and love very much. And so we based Tim C. Uh, Kerman on Tim Cox. Uh, and uh, I don't know, every time I see that character, it, uh, it, it makes me feel warm feelings. Um, so yeah, that's my answer to that one. Our next one here is from Kanatics. Will we be able to terraform planets in the future, like Eve and Duna? Nope. <laughs> Fastest answer today. Uh, our, our next one here is from I. Oh, okay. Well, oh, sorry. I don't know how far down we want to go down the road on that one. Um, I, I'm trying to think what is the likelihood of of that being something that modders could attempt. Uh, but yeah, I. Not a thing that is a priority for us right now. That's fair. Uh, our next one here is from I Like Ike. What event in IRL space exploration that you experienced, learned, ha slash learned about had the most significant impact on you? I don't know how many people lived through the uh, space flight drought of, you know, the 90s. <laughs> 
uh, in the early 2000s, there was definitely a period during which it felt like uh, we were kind of in stuck in neutral uh, as a civilization. Um, and it was probably Robert Zubrin who kept me afloat through that era. He he wrote a lot about an, uh, a proposed architecture called Mars Direct. Um, I just appreciated that he was moving the ball forward uh, toward a goal. Um, and uh, I still, we still all kind of revere him and think he's amazing. Um, so yeah, that's had a pretty big impact. Next one from user Banjo. What feature of KSP2 are you most excited for and why is it interstellar travel? <laughs> Uh, well, I am excited for interstellar travel. The the thing I think is going to most radically alter the gameplay experience is sort of the combination of colonies and delivery routes. I think uh, when you're starting to build out an interplanetary interstellar infrastructure, um, yeah, things get very creative and very interesting. And yeah, I can't wait for it. Next one here from Unbaggettable. What is your opinion on data mining the game? Do you feel that stuff is getting leaked or are you excited that data mines give the community a lot of hope for the game? I mean, people are going to root around and stuff. They're curious and they're enthusiastic. Uh, and I just take it as a sign that people are uh, excited about the game. And so, you know, game on, dig around. Cool. The next one is from user name Alaska. Any thoughts on adding VR support to KSP2 in the future? I want it really badly, uh, but it's definitely a conversation for after 1.0. Well, next one from user Porbus. Now that we have a boat launch option, is it likely that we will get a dedicated boat or submersible parts at some point in the future? Yep. As part of the new buoyancy spec, um, the, you know, ballast parts and fluid pumps are, are, are in the mix there. So there would very likely be some specialized parts probably interacted with within the uh, resource manager where you're, you're tran transferring fluids from the surrounding medium into and out of your vehicle. Next one from Tancho. Which aspect of development or which upcoming feature do you really think will make the game unique when compared to KSP1? Do you think the current performance problem will stick around or become more prominent as new features are being added? Uh, I mean, the of course, the current performance problems will not stick around. I mean, they're, they're going down daily. Um, and of course, they need to be very aggressively addressed because perf optimization is critical for the arrival of colonies and interstellar and and then multiplayer takes all of those things and multiplies them. Uh, so, yeah, uh, those those performance problems will will always be a thing that we're constantly pursuing and and improving. Next one's from user Octopus. Orbital colonies have been mentioned. Will they have set? Will they have a set orbit once the first part has been built, or will they be able to move like with engines like other spacecraft? Uh, they're coasting rigid body arrays. They're basically just like very large vessels. Um, there will not be engines in the V and the BAE when you're making an orbital colony, but uh, I cannot prevent you from, uh, pulling a, uh, what's, what's this, the Star Wars with the hammerhead Corvettes or whatever and shoving your thing and making it crash. Uh, you know, that's for, that's for you to do. Sorry. I sound so old. Which was, what's the Star War with the. <laughs> rogue one rogue one did i did i is that the one that's the one yeah, that's that right. the one <laughs> our shield generator is being added no, okay we're gonna get back on topic here so user birch mallard ban what suggestion from the community do you think were helpful yeah i mean we talked a little bit about this the 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 prominence of the wobbly rocket conversation has been pretty illuminating uh super helpful to learn user experience pain points where does the ui work where does it not where do people get stuck um the community's really been helping us shine a light on on where we need to improve. And then real quick, I know we're getting close on time here, but we're going to still keep answering some questions because we have a few, we have a bunch left. We're going to try and go over probably 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so thanks for hanging out. Maybe we'll go longer. We're trying to get to the questions. We want to make sure everyone here is, uh, is definitely heard. Uh, our next question here is from Raven X 1984. Will rotors have hinges, rotors and hinges be coming back at some point? Yeah, it's a, it's part of the post 1.0 conversation. I would like them to. Next one from Munch42. How, how useful will orbital construction be and how awesome are the colonies? Completely critical to the interstellar progression. You cannot make a proper interstellar vehicle inside a gravity well. They're just too big. Um, now someone will prove me wrong and make an interstellar vehicle like and launch it from KSC and, and uh, I wish them luck. Cool. Uh, next one is from username Bear4224. 
Does the terrain system support overhangs and caves, or is it still using the old height map system? I need to call you out for saying old height map system. We are using a height map system. It is a new height map system. Uh, and it's, of course, continuing to see improvements, as you may have read in more talks, uh, recent dev blog. Um, so, no, it's height map based. So uh, if we're going to do any, if we perceive there to be a gameplay justification for overhangs in caves, those will probably need to be built out of static meshes. Um, but currently, uh, we do not have specific plans for that. Next one's from the username Meek. Will there be secret launch sites added or will we build, a cus build custom launch pads on other planets? Uh, okay, two answers for that one. Um, on Kerbin, the plan is to have four separate agency launch sites that are basically four different KSCs equidistantly placed around the equator. Um, that's for multiplayer. Um, and then... Uh, Obviously, colony vehicle assembly buildings are, are launch pads on other planets. You, so you can place one anywhere you want to once the colony system's online. Next one's from MMDMK5. Will we be able to reach the speed of light and or FTL? You will not. Uh, physics uh, says no. Uh, so in our pursuit of uh, realism, we have determined very early on in the project that there will be uh, no fancy magic technologies. So light is the ultimate speed limit. Cool. Next one here is from Neo Paradox. What are goals and visions for multiplayer? How do you see players interact with each other? Will players be able to go on collective missions on the same crafts? Will players be able to share colony buildings once that comes out and create? Man, that's like eight questions in one. Um, I mean, right, so there's there's... There's the asynchronous player story, which is that, uh, you know, someone's hosting a multiplayer game. Me and my friends are sort of checking in and out of that game over maybe multiple days um, where we're, we're, but maybe we're all aligned in the same agency. So we're sharing our science payout. And so I can go gather some science by doing a, a particular mission. And then we all have a little bit extra to play with the next time my friends log in. Um, we're sharing physical resources and setting up delivery routes between each other's colonies, that sort of thing. Um, there's also this idea of synchronous multiplayer where you're doing, you know, I don't know, car races, plane races, space races. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm even now somewhat curious to see which of those two turns out to be like the predominant way people play multiplayer. Uh, I'm excited about both. Cool. Next one from Veggie. What is your favorite book? Um, well, my favorite book series is the Master and Commander books. Um, but my, uh, let's see, my favorite single book, probably for nostalgia reasons, uh, there's a book called A Fire Upon the Deep by someone named Werner Vinge. Uh, you know, big galaxy scale, big idea, science fiction. Um, yeah, that one's great. I love that one. We have one from, uh, user F. Calva. Will we have rough insulation services, surfaces for spacecraft parts instead of metallic to paint the spectrum? It is a thing that the art team is constantly discussing internally. So, you know, no promises there, but obviously something's on our radar. And from Gordon Lemon, will there, will there be more colony parts than what is shown in the trailers? Yes. Uh, <laughs> username false007. <laughs> Will the surface of the of the moons and pla and planets in space, and when landed, be more detailed in the distant future? Yep, uh, with with more talks, new terrain system. Uh, yes, much more detailed. We have one here from the X Lone Wolf. What would you say is the most troublesome feature to get working over the course of KSB 2s development? Um, procedural wings probably required. Uh, an unusually high amount of A, B, C, and D testing, like just constantly back and forth, uh, trying to get them tuned uh, to work correctly and feel good and have the the experience of building them feel good and have them be visually uh, uh, good looking. And uh, I mean, even things like how uh, editable should they be? What should the limits look like? There was just a shocking amount of edge cases to explore with those. Um, but very happy with what we ended up with. Next one, here's from user up. What kind of ranges can we expect with colonies? Will all colonies be roughly the same size? Will we be able to have 
be able to have small one to two launch research colonies along with the gigantic industrial ones? Will there be any upper size limit? Uh, so there's no there's no plan for an enforced upper size limit. Uh, you know, they are very similar to the constraints that apply to vehicles, right? It is a thing that is made of parts. Um, and uh, we want people to be able to make it as large as they want to make it. Um, but obviously, not all computers are created equal and not all ambitions, not all personal ambitions are created equal. And I'm sure people will find where their personal size limit is. It probably has to do with how low a frame rate they can tolerate. Um, so, yeah, a very similar logic applies to colonies and, and vehicles. We have one from user Monocle. Do you expect multiplayer KSP2 to overtake single-player KSP2 in terms of player count and development when it releases? In other words, will single-player KSP2 become mostly obsolete? Uh, I've never thought about that. Um, gosh, you know, there, there's something about single-player KSP2. It's a pretty, it can be very meditative, you know. You, you come home at the end of a day and part of the way you unwind is just noodle around with some parts and goof around. Um, I. I don't think that'll ever go away. I, I won't always want to be sharing what I'm doing uh, with, with other people. Uh, so, we'll, But we'll, we'll see. That's an interesting question. We have one here from uh, Mo Eggs. What is the reason behind not allowing early access players the ability to use the debug menu? Since it's a sandbox game, its submission seems odd, especially for early access. Will it be included at some point for single-player campaigns? Yeah, so um, those debug controls have mostly been added, uh, you know, for internal developer purposes, um, but they have not necessarily been subjected to the same quality assurance process or even a structured design validation process that we want to see for something public facing. Um, so, uh, especially because some systems that you might not expect to break do get broken when you use things like teleportation, um, the presence of those debug controls introduces this huge additional factor against which we need to, uh, when, when we're reviewing bug reports, for example, if we discover that, that something is taking place as a result of, of a failed teleportation or something, it's just, it adds a bunch of new variables that at the moment we don't want to be tracking. Um, I do think we want there to be a sanctioned uh, debug can, debug menu for players, but uh, our our sketchy internal version is is not ideal, and we'd rather not add that into the mix. I have one from usernames Entronics. Will KSP two wheels finally work as intended? I mean, anecdotally, they've improved. Um, we we are keeping a close eye on on user reports around wheels, um, and we think they're better than they've ever been. Uh, but definitely call it out if you come across a behavior that you think is beyond the pale. Username Tube here wants to know, what, besides Kerbal Space Program 2, what have you worked on before? Oh, oh boy. Uh, uh, well, I've been in games since 1993. This is my 30th anniversary making video games. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I guess it'll be uh, June? June will be my 30th anniversary. Um, first thing I ever worked on was something called Fast Action Pack, <laughs> which is a bunch of, like, knockoff... 8-bit uh, games for uh, a company called uh, the Dreamers Guild. That was in 1993. Um, I worked on I Have No Mouth and I'm a Scream at that company. I worked on Starfleet Command 2. Uh, I worked on Demigod. Um, I did a stint on Bejeweled. <laughs> I mean, when you've been in this industry, as long as I have, you've touched a lot of stuff. Many, many canceled projects that no one's ever heard of. Um, I took a, a couple years off to work on, a, on an indie comic. Uh, called non-player for image. Um, yeah, been all over the place. Well, I just gotta say, congrats on thirty years. That's an achievement. But uh, ne ne next question here, we have. Are you congratulating me for staying alive for that long? Or <laughs> no, it's just video games. It's uh, it's it's an achievement. I just I I feel like we got to get you a medal. But we'll we'll talk about that later. Uh, right. Our our next one here is from Uga Booga. Uh, do you play any games outside of KSP? If so, what games? Um, right now I'm pretty obsessed. In fact, many of us on the team are pretty obsessed with this VR game called Walkabout Mini Golf. Um, I'm telling you, the, the future of VR is mini golf. <laughs> we, we love it. It is so good, you guys. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Am I officially allowed to like 
recommend you buy a game that's not KSP2. First buy KSP2, but then after that, get Walkabout Mini Golf. It's the coolest VR game. We love it. Perfect. You walk about mini golf to discuss the rockets you want to build in Kerbal and your downtime. That's right. That's exactly right. Uh, one, we have one here uh, from Crow. They want to know who makes all of your awesome Ker Kerbal Sona profile pictures. Uh, that's that's Matt Pope. He's uh, our community artist, and he is the best. Um, yeah, he, he made them for all of us. It's really cool. We have one from user Felix. The performance has improved slightly with the latest patch, but unfortunately, it's still not enough. Will the will the, the performance be improved with upcoming patches? Yes, yes, it will. <laughs> uh, we have one here from Roman. How different will the science and science gathering be in KSP two versus KSP one, or will it be similar? Oh, similar in the broad strokes. One from Aaron. Are big features like science or interstellar on the back burner until the game is better optimized? Or are there big features being developed alongside bug and performance patches? Yeah, it, it's more parallel. Um, we've, we've got a lot of people focused on a lot of different things at the same time. I have one from Vaporized Kerbal. Do you have an estimated date to release support for controller setups such as HOTAS stick and throttle sets, custom controllers designed specifically for KSP, or maybe even a racing sim equipment to use for rovers? As, a, as a, an owner of a HOTAS stick that I'm not able to use, I can say HOTAS will be supported. Uh, no date yet on that, but yeah, it's a, it's a point of frustration for me as a player. One from Hofflet. Do you think spending too much time, so much time on KSP2 alone has taken a toll on your mental health? <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally normal. Why would you ask that? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Uh, alone, KSP2 alone, like it's just me making it? Is that what they're implying? I, I, yes, programming this entire game by myself has, <laughs> has been brutal. Uh, no, man, this is fun. We're living the dream. I, I, it's, it's hard for me to fully express how it feels like I am living in a dream. It's, it's the best possible life. I have one from a user Soul666. Have you ever at one point during development thought about giving up on KSP2 due to reasons? If so, what made you continue anyway? If not, what kept you motivated? Uh, no, we. I, I I never contemplated giving up. It's uh, it's too much fun to work on, and it's too. I mean, it's an it's kind of maybe it's a little bit of an obsession. Like you know, you know that there's cooler things coming around the corner, and you just can't wait to to see them come into being. And if by your own actions you can bring them to being at a higher level of quality, then you give it everything you've got. We have one from user Bont for the. Brown low. I'm so sorry. I can't get the name right. <laughs> what was launch day like at Intercept Games? It was exciting. We, uh, I mean, you were there. We drank champagne. Uh, yeah, it was great. We do love champagne around here. Uh, next one here I have is from Crow. Also, from previous uh, question they had on Discord. The Discord. Uh, when is Jebediah getting his own TV show? Uh, when Hollywood comes knocking. Um, yeah. Let us know, Hollywood. Well, we're getting close on time. I'm going to end it on one more question here. This is, uh, just want to know what your thoughts are here. This is from Steel Eater from the Discord. Do you pour the milk before or after the cereal? Okay, for real, I'm going to ask you this, Michael. Who pours, you don't pour milk before the cereal, do you? This, uh, this is your you? AMA. I, wait, I AMA. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, here's the, now we got to add an hour. Um, I don't understand the utility of pouring the milk before the cereal. Why, why would you, like, just cur I'm curious. Why would you do that? What's the goal? It keeps it from getting soggy is what I'm told. I don't know. They say it on TikTok, apparently. Like, I, maybe I'm wrong. I don't. I think it's like, you know, that you're me. I, mean, I think it's basically like, you know, you refill the bowl with the, the milk. Once you eat all the cereal, you keep refilling the bowl. Okay, I'm, I'm going to relate what Dakota is yeah. saying, which is that you keep refilling the bowl? Yeah, so once you eat all the cereal, there's still milk left over, so then you can more cereal. So is that you're, less you're true when you? I don't know. I think people are dumb. <laughs> I, I I guess probably. So there's a sort of min max uh, impulse that I want to like. I want the optimal uh, isostatic balance or something. Like I want the height of the milk to be exactly correct with respect to the cereal. But then the cereal is sometimes buoyant. Maybe there's different answers depending on different cereals. Well, here's the thing. If you give me Count Chocula in October and I can put a bunch of milk and have chocolate milk after I'm having it. Also, I, I don't do regular milk. I want to make sure transparent. So any variety of not regular milk and you, you put drink transparent milk. 
No, oat, 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 just oat milk, almond milk. I don't know. There's some some variety, right? But if you if you get the Count Chocula, it's my favorite cereal. You put the milk on top of that, and then you eat the cereal, and then you have a chocolate milk treat at the end of that. But the milk goes on top of the cereal. It does this, the milk does not go first because that would just I can't do that. I, I, uh, thinking back, I'm not sure I've eaten too many buoyant cereals, but I remember as a kid there were like highly buoyant, like Crunch Berries or something. Are they they float, right? So does that change the, the calculus? Like, do you? But they get so. They get waterlogged and then they go down. I don't know. I. Yeah. Around the table, talking back and forth. That was a window into uh, our process. So, so I just so to get the answer to the question here, Nate. Uh, you put the cereal and then the milk. I put the cereal and then the milk. Um. I, Hmm. But now I'm questioning that choice. I started out very skeptical, but I'd I'd like to hear the the use cases. Well, I guess I'm good. If anyone has good use cases, please leave them in the chat. We'll be sure to read them. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining us. I know that there's a lot of questions that didn't get answered. Uh, we are going to be putting out a document later, and if some of the questions that we did miss, we will go ahead and type them up and get those for you. Those will still be from Nate Simpson. Uh, so look from that for, from the team here later today. And again, thank you. And uh, But on that note, Nate, do you have any parting words for our community? Uh, thank you all for uh, your enthusiasm and your patience. Um, we are, as I said, fueled by that enthusiasm. I, I know there's a Dakota, I think. Did, did we post a uh, uh, highlights? Did we post weekly highlights yet? Um, oh, that went up yesterday. Okay, great. I, I, I will be going to look at those immediately after this conversation. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're just so excited to see people doing surprising things in the game, and we're having a lot of fun watching you all have fun. Well, on that note, have a wonderful Friday, everyone. Thank you so very much. And uh, until next time, take care. Bye, everybody.